Recently, I shared this stock to flow image, which reached over 200,000 people. And given this is crypto, I'm sure the responses were very rational. So let's actually look at the validity of stock to flow and other BTC price models. Today we're going to be looking at Bitcoin pricing models and their validity and where better to start than the Bitcoin stock to flow model we have here on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. Now I was aware this was quite a controversial chart with some people potentially not believing so much in its validity but after tweeting out just a few days ago it got a pretty harsh reaction which I was a little surprised at to be honest. Obviously you don't have to believe in its future predictability and accuracy but I think it was a bit bizarre to see some people really angry at this. So first and foremost, we'll have a little bit of a backstory and history on what stock to flow is. It was created by Plan B and it's trying to model Bitcoin's valuation based on the stock to flow of Bitcoin in comparison with other assets like gold and silver. Now on BitcoinMagazinePro.com, we have the original stock to flow model. If we just scroll down here, what we can see is this entire article covering exactly how it was calculated, such as Bitcoin scarcity on a log log scale just keep that in mind for later but if we just scroll down we can see the original stock to flow model valuation here which is the one we have on site he did however a few years later actually revisit this and produced a new stock to flow valuation the cross asset one which actually predicted a considerably higher price bitcoin up to a price of 288,000 at some time between 2020 and 2024 so maybe we have a great december in front of us but who knows but Back to the chart here. People were seemingly very angry that I shared this chart, which is projecting Bitcoin to be potentially valued at around $420,000 in April 2025 as its initial price before climbing higher to probably somewhere around $500,000. A lot of people are saying this model is very inaccurate due to the fact that it is broken to the downside and there's new models that have been made, etc. But I think people are losing the definition of what a model actually is. If I just go to the Cambridge Dictionary here, a model is a simple representation of a system or process, especially one that can be used in calculations or predictions of what might happen. These models aren't necessarily meant to be absolutely perfect and certainly can't predict the future because absolutely nothing can. I like to use the stock to flow model because it gives us some understanding of the impact of the Bitcoin halving events. And people that believe that the halving events do not have any influence on the Bitcoin price action I think are potentially misled because the thing that actually drives the price of not just Bitcoin, but all assets is supply and demand. And if we are seeing the supply of an asset decrease in terms of its inflation rate being cut by 50%, as long as demand remains constant, we should see price reflect that positively. Now, I do think the influence of the halving events is going to diminish over time and the stock to flow model obviously isn't going to work forever. The halving events, as they're decreasing by 50% every single time, are going to have, I think, a less and less an impact because the amount of circulating supply of Bitcoin isn't going to be as influenced. Right now, we have 19.7 million or so Bitcoin in circulation. And with a hard cap of 21 million, that remaining 1.3 million-ish is going to take 120 years or so to mine. Therefore, if we're seeing the inflation rate drop by 50%, it's not going to have that much influence on the existing liquidity of Bitcoin. And something like the Stock to flow would also see Bitcoin pretty much reaching infinite valuations if it were to continue indefinitely. However, people are looking to other Bitcoin price models as potentially more accurate and are definitely going to accurately predict Bitcoin going forward. So one of these most popular ones is the Bitcoin Power Law, a chat we actually don't have on Bitcoin Magazine Pro. So this is the original post regarding Bitcoin's Power Law. Now what we can see here is this chart, which is just modeling Bitcoin on a log log chart. So this is where it differs from more logarithmic curves and regression lines you see on other indicators because the X axis, the horizontal axis is also in a logarithmic. So we typically measure Bitcoin on a log chart on the Y axis. So it goes 0, 1, 10, 100, 1000, etc. But we don't usually measure the X axis, the dates 
on a log axis, we usually do that on a linear axis. So it'd be a semi log chart. Now this is made using all of Bitcoin's previous price history and does make some assumptions that the four year cycle of Bitcoin is going to come to an end because over a log X axis basis, we're not going to see those big four year cycles that we've historically seen. Also, we scrolled out initially predicted that after our December 2017 peak, when this metric was made, that we would see two peaks, which we did not. And if we scroll down further, it also predicted that the baseline of price would be $10,000 which was just before we dipped to around $3,000. Now, this isn't to have a dig at the creator of the power law or the, the model itself. One thing I really dislike about Bitcoin is it seems like there's some cults and people that are really religiously following certain models and feel attacked if we try and not disprove them, but just try and have an open conversation about the validity of one or the other. But models change. Anyone who's following the power law is ignoring the fact that this is again just using all of Bitcoin's historical data. So what I've done here is just using the Bitcoin Magazine Pro API is just recreate the Bitcoin power law so we can see that our value here, which is basically just how we're calculating this power series line. So again, this is using this log log model. What we can see is these peaks are getting closer and closer together as the X axis is squashing in. So again, this kind of would insinuate that the four year cycles are coming to an end. It would also insinuate unlimited growth for BTC, albeit at a lower rate. And I know that the point of the power law is to also try and map out Bitcoin's adoption on that S-curve adoption as more people use Bitcoin. But ultimately, it has the same flaws as pretty much any other Bitcoin price model. And one thing you can also do is if you see this chart here, is if you just remove the fact that it's on a logarithmic x-axis and just make it a linear x-axis, it just becomes something that we've already seen previously, which would be the Bitcoin rainbow chart, it is pretty much exactly the same thing. What we can also do is looking at this logarithmic chart. If we were to assume that this power law was drawn after the first BTC cycle, the line would look something like this, which would have been disproved. Midway through the second cycle, it looks something like this, which also isn't very accurate at all today. If we draw it something like this after the third cycle, it's kind of getting a bit closer until today where of course, it has moved again. Every single data point this chart is going to move. So of course, it's always going to be accurate. But that doesn't mean it's very predictive if we have to change it every single time we see a new candle being printed. And as I said, I know this is also trying to model out Bitcoin's hash rate and adoption, etc. But a power law isn't specific to Bitcoin. It appears in lots of different things. But really, with any limited data set, Bitcoin only being about 15 years old, you can draw a power series trend line power law from pretty much anything. Here, for example, I've modeled out the average height of a human versus the average age of a human. And as we can see, if we put a logarithmic x-axis, we can see that we can draw a power lot very accurately given this data. Because as a baby to a one-year-old, you grow quite a lot. And then from one-year-old to a 10-year-old, you grow quite a lot. So by the time I'm 50, I should be about five meters tall. So here's hoping to that. And as I said, this isn't the first time people have tried to trend line Bitcoin on a infinite scale. Here we have just an example I found on Twitter, which was made in 2018, 2017, saying Bitcoin would never drop below this trend line before it did about six weeks later. And it also modeled Bitcoin's price in January 2025 to be about $6.7 million. Also, we can see the original logarithmic curve of BTC made in 2014, which again has a different R squared value because it always will have a different R squared value. It's a model using historical data that's ignoring all external factors. And by this point, it is modeled BTC to be around, well, between 500,000 and a million dollars a day, it kind of cuts off in there. But really, again, probably not super accurate. So if we just go back to the Bitcoin rainbow chart here, this used to be an incredibly popular, one of the most popular charts we had, and one of the most popular charts you'd see on social media. Over the past couple of years, it's not been as fashionable because actually it broke to the downside. What we can do is just scroll down here and see that this is the updated version of the rainbow chart because any type of linear regression analysis like this is just based on the price action that has happened historically. And that isn't necessarily the best indicator of what's guaranteed to happen going forward. But it's really easy when we can just reformulate the data. Again, I'd like to reiterate, this isn't me having some problem with the power law or people that created the power law. Of course, it may come to fruition this cycle. There's a possibility that anything happens. Bitcoin could have already topped out this cycle and we could bottom out it. $15,000 again. You have to acknowledge that that is a possibility. We could reach $420,000 as predicted by the stock to flow. We have to acknowledge again that that is a possibility. However, trying to predict the future price action of Bitcoin seems a little bit of a waste of time in my opinion. Of course, I do it every now and again, as does everyone. But predictions, unfortunately, are like ass.
pearls. Everyone has one and usually they stink like shit. What we need to do is actually utilize Bitcoin's most impressive and unique feature, which is the fact that we can see the supply and demand economics of the network in real time. Why are we ignoring every other factor looking at purely price action or purely Bitcoin's inflationary rate to try and model it compared to traditional assets when this is an asset class like nothing else, when we can actually see people taking profit in real time, we can see the spent output profit ratio. So we can see when people are in profit and taking profit or capitulating and take the appropriate action based on that. Or we can look at something like the value days destroy multiple, which again, recently called the previous all time high before we had eight months of choppy consolidation, as well as all of the previous major peaks, because this is weighted to see when experienced large holders are beginning to sell their coins. And again, historically, it's worked amazingly well. And all of these price models are ignoring the data that's currently happening. We can look at something like the MVRV Zscoff, which again is a way we can actually kind of maybe see how Bitcoin could top out this cycle. It would just remove the Z score here and add on the MVRV. Well, we can see this is the realized cap, but the realized price is currently around $34,000. We can see here that the MVRV at the previous cycle top was about 3.96. The one before that was 4.72. Now, this is the ratio between the market cap and the realized cap of BTC. So essentially just dividing this black line by the blue line. And what we currently see is we're at a value of 2.61 now, which given the realized price is about $34,000 matches up nicely to our current price of around $88,000 as I film this. But if we were to reach a value of four on this, like we have done previously, then we could see a Bitcoin price of around $136,000 at a peak. Or if we see something like a value of five, which we haven't seen for a couple cycles, then that'd be about $170,000 for a Bitcoin price peak, which is pretty reasonable, I think. I don't think that $420,000 stock to flow prediction is necessarily gonna come to fruition in this cycle. Like I said, I just like to use it as a tool to really visualize the impact of the Bitcoin halving event, although that impact will diminish going forward. But what we can do, looking at that $136,000, $170,000 rough figure from this, of course, I know that these values are always changing, but these values aren't going to historically change their previous values just based on current data. What we can see is using on-chain data like this is something that we've historically done on this channel. So what we did here in this video that I made on December 27th, if I just move this way, just after the Bitcoin bottom in price action, we predicted a Bitcoin price peak of $173,000 in November 2025. And that hasn't really changed too much. What we can also see is we predicted the Bitcoin price bottom, again, based on on-chain metrics, the day of Bitcoin's price bottoming out. Again, if I just move myself in November 2022, what we can also see is as Bitcoin topped out at our all-time high previously before we had eight months of choppy consolidation, again, we pretty much called this to perfection because I'm not saying I can predict the future. All I can do very well is react to data. All of these price models are ignoring the external factors such as global liquidity, which undoubtedly has an influence on the Bitcoin price action, as we can see by the historically almost perfect correlation. And to look at these price models and ignore external factors, you're basically admitting that if, say, America started buying up a million Bitcoin a year on their reserve treasury, that wouldn't positively impact the Bitcoin price outside of these model predictions. Or if global banks and everyone just decided to ban Bitcoin, that wouldn't have a negative influence on price action. Of course, there's many external factors influencing price, and it's far better to react to the data than try and predict the future. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all the resources we've discussed today, as well as the many more that are all available on BitcoinMagazinePro.com, your number one source for Bitcoin analysis. So just to summarize on a topic that I'm sure no one will get irrationally angry about, Bitcoin price models are simply tools to help simplify that complex ecosystem of Bitcoin and relying on historical data, comparisons to traditional markets and pre-existing understandings of how markets work is really limiting your view on how Bitcoin could play out in terms of its future price action. These models all work until they don't. Countless models have existed before today and countless more will exist after today. This doesn't mean they're not useful over a given time. Of course, Bitcoin stock to flow could be proven right again this cycle. The power law could be right for this and the next cycle. But realistically, these exist in oversimplistic isolation from all the other impacting factors we can see from 
global liquidity cycles from the actual supply and demand economics of BTC when we're seeing people actually selling and taking profit? Do we just ignore that because there's a line on a chart? It's a really simplistic view and probably isn't going to lead to you outperforming a vast majority like using these on-chain and macroeconomic data points likely is going to, like we can see from the historical examples. Again, this isn't me trying to boost my ego and say I got multiple calls right in the past. I'm likely going to get more wrong in the future. I've gotten countless calls wrong previously. All I'm saying is when the data suggests something, I react. And historically, we do have a pretty decent track record here. And like I said, utilizing these models really takes away from the real edge that Bitcoin provides, which is seeing the real-time supply and demand economics of the network. That's certainly what I'm going to be doing going forward. And I hope that you at least take a little bit of inspiration from this video to do the same. If you liked this video, then please visit BitcoinMagazinePro.com, where our analytics help you to cut through the noise to make informed, data-driven decisions about Bitcoin. With over 150 live chats, personalized indicator alerts, in-depth crypto industry reports, API access, and more, all for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are on Bitcoin price models, such as the stock to flow, or any other ones that maybe we don't have, such as the Bitcoin power law. Like I said, we have models like this because they do serve a purpose. Going forward, if we can see that this is broke, horrendously, then obviously we'll stop supporting them. If new price models come out that people find useful and we think actually can provide some edge for people's analysis and investing, then again, we'll add them to the site. But if you don't like this video, if you don't like these price models, if you disagree with everything I said, that's fine. I hope you have a nice day. Regardless, leave me some hate comments down below. I look forward to reading and replying to them just as much as all the lovely ones. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below or on social media. Again, I like replying to them just as much as well. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day and enjoy Bitcoin at new all-time highs. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.